What is up you guys? My name is Marley from the Engine Base and today we're going to talk about that thing that everybody's freaking out over right now and that is AB1824. Now before I get into it, I do want to let you know that we're going to do a couple different videos on this. Uh, we have a really cool interview with Jeremy Lee coming up really soon. Uh, Jeremy Lee, Lee is the guy behind the petition so that's going to be really awesome. Super excited for that. Um, I'm also trying to get some stock vehicles together. Um, of higher caliber, so exotics, uh, to see if they actually pass the California like law of legalness. So that's gonna be really fun. So I ask that you guys subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of this. Uh, but I just want, let's just get right into it guys. What is AB 1824? It is a bill that has already been passed that changes a particular vehicle code, which is vehicle code 27150 to change the fine that you would get from fix it to mandatory. And it also now applies to motorcycles. So let me read you vehicle code 27150 so you can kind of get a full understanding of this law. Every motor vehicle subject to registration shall at all times be equipped with an adequate muffler and in constant operation and properly maintained to prevent any excessive or unusual noise and no muffler or exhaust system shall be equipped with a cutout, bypass, or similar device. That is exactly what that vehicle code said. So there's, you know how vehicle, like laws have like little bars underneath them that's like point A, point B, point C. Well, originally in one of the points, it was a fix it ticket. So you could go to a state ref or prove somehow that you are, your, your muffler is now in compliance with the law and you could just get the fine written off. Now you can't do that. Yeah, now you can't do that. You actually have to either pay the fine or figure out a way to prove right then and there while the officer is still there that you are in compliance with the law. I'll explain a little bit more. Now, if you've seen or heard or know that if your exhaust is under 95 decibels, you are actually in compliance with the law. That sounds great, right? But I just said a minute ago, it's no longer a fix a ticket, it's mandatory. So here's the crazy, crazy thing on why everybody's freaking out over it, right? You have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that at that exact second time, day, you know, place that that officer gave you a citation, you were in compliance with the law. You can't wait you know, 48 hours to do a whole video on how you're actually stock and I'm under 95 decibels because now you have a 48 hour time frame that is just blank. You can change out an exhaust in 48 hours. You know what I mean? So that that's why this is an, an issue. You have to figure out immediately or as soon as you possibly can that you are in compliance with the law and prove to the officer in court that you the, essentially the officer was wrong. You were in compliance with the law. Now again, I say beyond a reasonable doubt because again, you can't wait a week if you got state wrecked and go get a certification of uh, compliance and show that to court. It's no longer fixed a ticket. Like I said, it is a mandatory fine. Now, I know a lot of people have questions or about like, well, I have a stock exhaust. I'm fine, right? No, you're not. And here's the reason why. We have to go back to vehicle code, again, 27150. There are two parts to this that you have to listen to. The first one is adequate muffler, and the second one is prevent any excessive or unusual noise. Now, just because you think your exhaust is adequate does not mean the officer thinks that your exhaust is actually adequate. You may think you weren't being excessive, but the officer may find you excessive. That could be for literally any vehicle. I'm stretching a little bit here, but if a Prius was sitting on the road and it was one of those weird hybrid ones and he rubbed the engine a little bit, he could potentially get an excessive exhaust noise in all seriousness. That's why this law is so ridiculous. There's no parameter or uh, clarification of, uh, of, a, of the word excessive or adequate. That's why the law needs to be changed. It needs to be clarified so we understand and an officer understands what exactly is an adequate muffler and what exactly does excessive noise mean? So guys, I want to start this kind of next part thinking, trying to give you my opinion on this. Again, I've been, I've been doing this for, I don't want to say doing this. I've been researching this for the last couple of days. I'm really passionate about changing this. 
Um, I've read articles, statements, I've been everywhere. I've getting opinions from people. I've watched uh, lawyers speak about this. I, I have really been doing the research, so I hope that that gives you a little bit of confidence in what I'm saying. But I do wanna share a little bit of my opinion on this. Um, I am of the opinion that this law, um, it's not about necessarily changing AB 1824. It's actually about changing that particular vehicle code, period. Um, I understand, and honestly, I am, I agree with the officers that street takeovers need to stop. Um, this is a, it's a crappy way of going about it, but it, this law is really for the people that they catch um, at those street takeovers or seen at the street, uh, street takeovers. Um, so on one side I go, I get it. But on the other side, you know, as a car enthusiast in California, it's not fair uh, to be profiled like that and feel like I'm a criminal in my own vehicle because I love cars and I want to modify my car and I hate that people are getting profiled because they have a passion for vehicles. That's not fair. Um, not to mention that this code is absolutely outdated. I am of the opinion that a lot of OEM vehicles are actually not in compliance with California state law and a prime example would actually be our Fiat. Uh, we have a Fiat Abarth, it is a 2017, and from factory it comes straight pipe. I don't have a muffler on my car. Um, the other thing I do know is that the Shelby GT350s actually come with a bypass uh, mode, so they have like quiet mode and then like cool mode. Um, and again, in the law it says it, that uh, no muffler or exhaust system shall be equipped without a cutout, bypass, or similar device. It, again, this law is very outdated. It needs to be changed. It needs to be clarified because Yes, we all car enthusiasts that are against street takeovers want street takeovers to stop, but it shouldn't affect us and that's, and it's, it's not fair. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna do here is I actually got a couple good questions. Um, I can't, again guys, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, this is my interpretation of the law. Uh, I think it's pretty good, but it's always good to consult a lawyer if this thing uh, comes up for you. I will say though, I'm sure lawyers are very happy for this law because I know a lot of us are probably going to be going to a lawyer if we get this. So I do want to answer some questions though that I feel like I can answer. So here we go. What if you get a ticket even if you have a stock exhaust? My personal uh, opinion that will also cover your butt is as soon as you can, and I'm talking within five, ten minutes of getting a citation, get your phone out, go, hey, Look at my citation, I got this five, 10 minutes ago. There's the officer pulling away. I'm going underneath my car to record what is underneath my vehicle. Like, I don't care if you like, figure it out. Get underneath your car, show your exhaust, figure it out. Because again, like I said, you have to prove beyond a reason, unreasonable doubt, beyond an unreasonable doubt. Sorry guys, I'm making sure. You have to prove in court that you were in compliance with the law that exact time you got the citation and that the officer is wrong. You can't go four days later to a state ref or someone who could check or get a video of you, oh it's, you know, it's within compliance of the law because there are four days apart of you could have swapped it out, like that sort of thing. You, you have to make sure you're compliant as quickly as you can as soon as you get that citation. Does this really affect cars with stock exhaust and no modifications? Apparently, according to the internet, it does. There have been reports that an M4 brand new from the dealership got pulled over uh, and got this fine, which sucks if it really did happen, but that is more proof, or I guess it's not proof because you know people can say things on the internet, but you are gonna hear of things of stock vehicles getting this. So yes, it does affect you. You need to cover your butt. You need to help us change the law. Don't, don't just be like, I'm stock, I'm fine. I'm sorry, it, it does affect everybody. So another question, why does AB 1824 not apply to motorcycles? It does, it does now. Uh, why, I have no idea, but it does apply to motorcycles. And I think that's dangerous, um, especially in California where you can uh, lane split. I think it is important for exhaust to be heard. I don't want it to be deafening. And I think people who have deafening motorcycle sounds are annoying, but I do appreciate and understand uh, sound because most of the time I hear a motorcycle before I see it. 
and that's just with traffic and everybody's all crammed together. I can hear it coming down the road a little bit. You know, cause it's California, I have my windows rolled down, but I can hear it coming down the road. I say, oh, okay, I'm making sure I check my side mirror. Okay, he's maybe, you know, a few, few cars back, but I can hear him before I see him. And I think that's important. I think it does keep motorcycles safe if they are a little bit loud. Um, if I'm a shitty driver because I'm not paying attention, oh, I do pay attention. Okay, I'm gonna skip that part. <laughs> I'm not a shitty driver guys. I always pay attention to motorcycles and Danny is proof because my favorite thing in the entire world is moving over slightly and getting a thumbs up because I moved over. That literally brings me so much joy. You don't, you need to be in the car with me to understand. How many signatures do we need to rep repeal this law? Um, as many as it takes to get the law repealed. I don't know and I really don't think even Jeremy knows exactly how many there's, I've never seen a thing that's like, you have to get 1 million signatures and it will change. That's not how that works. It's more of a, it's more of a, hey, the people have spoken that we don't like this, this needs to change. Um, and then people who, you know, who can change it will want to be reelected into office. So if they see a big majority of people going, we don't like this, they'll be like, I need to make the people happy. So they'll go and then change it. So it's honestly however many it takes. It, it sucks. It may take us 10 million, but if that's what we gotta do, guys, that's what we gotta do. Ooh, good one, good one. Are all city police or in sheriffs enforcing this law? Or can any officer stop and give you the fine? Any peace officer in the state of California can give you this ticket. Now, the reason why I've personally said local PD isn't necessarily something I'm worried about is because Local PD has their own ordinances that they have to deal with. For example, like within like the city of like Glendale, there might be other issues that they have to, you know, deal with. Uh, the only you know, police department I'm concerned with is CHP. Now it says it in the name, California Highway Patrol. They are built to deal with traffic. So whether that's an escaping car or, or whatever, they're the ones that, you know, they deal with this on a daily ba basis. They're the ones that hand out probably, and I don't quote me on this, the most traffic violations. I'm, I'm assuming they probably are. Uh, not to mention CHP are the ones that have put out an official statement saying that this is a law change and we're waiting for you and we're looking for you, that sort of thing. So yes, yeah, CHP is the only one that I'm worried about, but local PD or LAPD or a sheriff can in fact give you this ticket. How does this affect non-California state residents? Okay, there's two ways here, okay? And one that you're probably not thinking about and one that you are thinking about. If your car is registered out of, out of the state of California and you're driving it around here in California, you do have to abide by the state laws. Um, it's kind of like, and I get that this is two completely separate like idea, like different categories, but it's of the same principle. If marijuana, marijuana is legal in your state and you brought it to another state where it's illegal, if you're caught with it, it's illegal. Or I mean, even you just bring it in, it's illegal. It, it's the same principle with like, sure it's legal in your state, but it's not illegal here. So you can't do it here, but it, it's that way. Uh, the other thing that how it does affect non-state residents is that California has always been considered a guinea pig state. Um, they're, they're the ones that tie all the new trendy laws like the craziness and other states tend to follow if it, they think it's successful or it's bringing in a good amount of money um yeah other states will follow so just because you live in oregon and you think oh this won't affect me it could potentially affect you if we don't get this changed so please guys even if you're not in california please sign this petition you have no idea it, it could affect you one day and that would suck we don't want to see you guys go through this we don't want to see any car enthusiasts go through this so Please, please sign it. Do you think we can really overturn this new law? Guys, I think we can. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, not just because of the petition and the amazing people that who put this together and all the amazing people who are pushing this and all that sorts of things. I think we're finally at a point where in this particular vehicle code, we're showing that this law is very outdated like I said before, there are cars, there are OEM cars that technically are not legal in the state of California because of, you know, example, our Fiat does not have a, a muffler on it. Like things are changing. This law was put in place a long time ago. So technology changes in a matter of years and months even. So 
yes, this law has to be changed. It, it needs to be. So yes, I do believe we can get this law changed. Um, if not changed, at least clarified. I, I really feel like they could put some parameters on officers for them to really understand what vehicles they can pull over and who they actually should be giving fines to. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope I clarified uh, some of the questions that you may have had or just kind of laid out exactly how this is going to play out. Um, again, it really does suck. You know, I'm, I've seen and I'm doing this personally. It does it does hurt when a lot of people are online saying like, oh, good, California deserved it or you voted this in and all that all that stuff. I understand that everybody has their own opinion but we're past that point now. Like this is here, this is happening. We gotta get, we gotta stop focusing on, oh, well you should have done this and focus on, okay, how are we as a community gonna change this? Because again, you know, California is one of those states where if something works, another state picks it up and then it spreads to, you know, s you know all the other states. So it could potentially affect you guys and it would really be awesome if you could just take one moment inside the petition um, all the, the sources and petition and everything that I've seen is also in the uh, description down below. So go ahead and check that out. Um, again, I'm going to say it one more time. Please, for the love of God, sign the petition. We need those signatures so we can go take this to media. People, media can get hyped and they can help add pressure onto these people that have the ability to change this law. So thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to talk to you guys later, and please stay safe out there, and if you do street takeovers, you suck.